All right, guys. So today I'm going to show you how to create a blog using Zimwriter from start to finish. And we're going to hit some hit some points along the way in terms of optimization, talk about the outline of a blog, what you should be considering before uh, creating a blog, and we're going to get to it. But before we do that, I feel like I have to introduce a little bit about what Zimwriter is. So let's just jump into the web page now. So Zimwriter was developed by Matt Zimmerman, who created this application that you install locally on your computer. So right now it's available for Windows and there is a Mac version coming soon at the, at the time of this recording. So please be on the lookout for that if you're a Mac user. Uh, what I want to also note is that uh, the whole idea of Zimwriter is it's a vehicle for generative AI writing and you use OpenAI's tokens and the, the credit you pay for OpenAI's API as the gas. And the, what it offers you is, you know, a cr incredible value for uh, the money you're paying and the output that you get. So essentially, it's just well-engineered prompt engineering into an application that allows you to deliver. It allows you to deliver uh, SEO optimized articles using background information, um, using strategical placements of target keywords, or making sure you're talking about specific categories or topics within a category and making sure you cover all your bases. So it's also great for using for local SEO. It does some bulk blog writing as well. Um, all this is to help you utilize this tool into your existing workflow and not to replace or just you know mass publish generative AI content. You're going to have to edit, review um, all these, you know, the output that this puts out. Uh, the articles that it puts out and review that because that's, you know, that's going to be your due diligence. You have to be responsible for that if you want to see any type of performance gain from your blog that you're trying to create. So what I would suggest is going in, going to the, you know, the homepage here, looking and seeing what Zimwriter is about, how to get started. You need to access to open AI. Uh, today, I actually, Zimwriter leverages a few different models right now, GPT 3.5, 3.5 Turbo, and GPT 4, if you have access to it. I currently do have access, so I'll be using GPT 4 uh, as the main model for the Zimwriter application. And I think I have 6.5.3, 6.54 just came out. Uh, I'm sorry, 6.53, and then 6.54 just was released, uh, I believe, yesterday. I still have to update that. Um, so you can see it's very early stages. There's a lot of updates, you know, on a monthly basis that are being produced for this piece of um, software, which is great. Uh, the the kind of also unique point here is that you can use this application within any text field on your computer. So a Notepad, Notepad++, Obsidian, which I'll be using today. You can use it within a, a, an actual website, right? You can use it on Google Docs, Microsoft Word, um, anything within WordPress, within your CMS that you're actually drafting up content on, you could use it anywhere. So it's like having ChatGPT or you know, OpenAI Playground within any editing or text window on your computer, right? So that's one of the, the main points there as well as being cost effective. Like I said before, you can pay as a monthly subscription. I believe it's under $10 if you want to try out the software <clears throat> and you get full access to all the features or there's a lifetime uh, price you can pay and own it for life. And all you have to do is replenish the gas for the Zimwriter vehicle, right? So you just have to uh, you know, add the tokens, add the credits to your OpenAI account to use the API. And that's for anyone who's leveraging OpenAI's API. So I think I think Matt's, you know, providing the community with a really not only crazy good tool when it comes to output, but you know, a very uh economical tool as well. There's a lot of training, the community is great. Uh, so yeah, so let's now let's dive into this a little bit. I see I have Zimwriter open and this is the, the main home screen now. So you have a few options here. And uh, what we're going to be using today is the magic command trigger. So essentially what that does is it allows me to come into a Word doc or text document, anything, anywhere. I'm using Obsidian just because I, I like the way this workflow looks and feels. I meant to title this. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So let me... Uh, this is how a magic command works. So you saw it says control one is my magic command trigger. So what does that do? It's like utilizing chat GPT. Um, this video is probably going to be pretty long considering a lot of the things I want to get through today, just as a preface. So I can say, you know, why is the sky blue? And then I can highlight this. I'm going to hit control one. You see that activates my magic command trigger. Zimwriter is now communicating with OpenAI's API. I've connected my API key to the tool. And it's sending my response and then sending back an output right within 
Obsidian or within my text editor. So the sky appears blue because of the way the Earth's atmosphere atmosphere scatters sunlight. The phenomenon is called Rayleigh scattering. When sunlight enters the atmosphere, it is made up of different colors, each having different wavelengths. Blue light has a shorter wavelength and is more scattered. Okay, so you can see that's it gives me our results there. And then you can say um, we can also highlight and control two. That's the continue writing, I believe. Yeah, continue writing trigger. So control two and even rewrite trigger is control three. And then you have three other commands or control or triggers you can set as your you know custom magic commands. And there you go. The scattering effect is named after Lord Rayleigh, a British scientist who first declared described the phenomenon in the 19th century. So you can see we highlighted the the, uh, the output we had before and then su submitted the command trigger to continue writing. And it gave us another two paragraphs. This is using GPT-4. So you can see the power behind this. So what I want to do today is utilize Zimmer, Zim Writer to help you build out a blog. And this is going to give us the basic structure. We'll have some other videos going into optimizing articles, but we want to cover a few bases here, right? What do we need for a blog? We need for a blog. So some people just say, you know, create categories, subcategories, and that's it, you know, start creating content. But if we want to be smart about this, we need a few things. We need to understand more. So we need to understand, um, is there a problem we're trying to solve or a problem we're trying to help within a community? Are we trying to educate a specific type of audience? Ask yourself some questions like that. So for me, uh, also, it has to be something you actually maybe enjoy writing about or learning about. So it doesn't become too cumbersome when you're writing content or developing and working on the site. I found it to be very useful. If you pick a topic that's pretty dull and boring to you and you're just doing it for the sake of, you know, you think it's going to have a high amount of traffic in the near future, you're going to get bored with it. So I am, uh, I, I ride motorcycles. I'm into motorcycle riding. So what I did or what I wanted to do is create a blog around um, educating beginning beginner riders on motorcycle safety and also educate them on the proper gear to wear for all riding situations. So in this blog, I'm also going to try to advertise motorcycle safety gear that's going to help these riders or these new these new beginner riders determine which uh, what safety gear options they have or can purchase just to make their writing experience more jo enjoyable All right so there's a lot of things that can go into this so that's my 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 topic and we can start there so uh this is kind of i'm going to give you kind of a, a layout here and i'm just using a markdown uh markdown is pretty common and pretty well well utilized within content writing uh, and um, Z um obsidian can leverage markdown right up so that's why you see me typing in some of this the markdown semantics here or syntax uh so topic so we are creating and you want to write this out because we're going to utilize this within our our prompt engineering so you want to have a topic so we are creating a blog to help new motorcycle riders learn how to safely ride motorcycles and educate them educate them on the proper gear to wear for all riding conditions in this blog, we are going to advertise motorcycle safety uh, gear to help motorcycle, let's say to help uh, beginner motorcycle riders determine what safety gear, let's see what riding gear options they can purchase to create a safer and more enjoyable writing experience. All right, so that's kind of my background here. So I have a topic, right? We have a overall theme or, so then we're gonna need a few things. So it's an overall theme is about, you know, helping new motorcycle riders learn. <clears throat> this could start where we are now around proper gear, educating them on riding safety. Uh, we also have to make sure we have or understand who our target audience is, right? Cause this is going to come into effect in the type of tone and how our writing style should shape itself or how we should shape it when, when we're developing any content or, or briefs. Uh, so yeah, so we have audience, we have our topic. There should also be um, kind of a target, uh, what you call a cluster, if you will, of keyword. It's not an exact keyword. We can, we can keep that in more into the, um, the specific content pieces. But in terms of uh, target query, right, it's going to be around uh, motorcycle, writing for beginners 
right? So that's kind of the, the generic topic or theme. I'll say theme theme of our of our main homepage or the main article. I'm mean, sorry, the main of the of the blog itself. And we have that. We'll come back to audience and creating that, how to develop one that makes sense and how you can leverage it in Zimwriter. This will make sense in just a little bit as we keep going here. So we're gonna need also category structure, category structure, right? And we'll develop that in a second. Just want to kind of list the things out we need here. We're also um we also want to make sure we have uh, the purpose. So purpose. So we have a topic, audience, target, theme, purpose. So the whole purpose here for why we're creating the blog, right? Personally, uh, just so I like to understand. We scratch. All right. So we have our category structure. So I'll keep it simple here because uh, this is what we're going to need to understand when it comes to creating the outline of the blog first. And I don't want to overcomplicate it too much. So we'll just stick it here. So how do we discover what our audience is? Because I think out of everything, this is what matters the most because then it shapes how we develop our, our future pieces. Um, let's look at our audience. So I have a prompt that I created in another document and I'm gonna copy it over. And it's just something you could write. So we wanna discover what our audience is going to be. And what is it? What is the audience? Is who or what the content is, right, is being written for? Who is it tailored to, right? Is it tailored to pro writers or beginner writers from a basic standpoint. But we want to understand a little bit more about that. And we want to tie it more into the marketing aspect. So what I like to do is I can take this context here, kind of what our topic is. I'm going to paste it in the audience section. It's kind of our background text on what the blog is about, which we're going to feed the AI so it understands what we're, what we're asking it. And now I'm going to take that command I had earlier, just as simple as what is a good target audience for this blog? Right, we'll let the AI do some of the work here. We'll read back the output and see if it makes sense. So I'm gonna highlight this, hit control one, which is my magic command trigger. And essentially it's sending all this data back to OpenAI, utilizing the API, and then it's gonna send us back an output. And the reason I prefaced before about having interest in the topic you're writing about is gonna make this experience a little bit more enjoyable and less daunting. What you can do is uh, when you're reading these outputs, you're going to have an idea, especially if you have an idea about the topic or the the theme or the, whether it's a hobby or, or some, something like that, and you have some basic knowledge into it, you're going to know if the output's you know correct or um, respected, would be respected within the community. If it's right questions, you'll see what I mean as I go through this. So what is a what did they give us for our output? A good target audience for this blog would be beginner motorcycle riders who are looking for guidance on safety practices and gear recommendations. Great. Individuals who are considering learning to ride a motorcycle and want to understand the importance of safety gear. Friends and family members of new motorcycle of new motorcycle riders who may want to purchase safety gear as gifts or support their loved ones in learning safe riding habits. So that's also a good one too, because if we're gonna kind of uh, sprinkle some affiliation with or affiliation links, affiliate links within the blog, you know, to kind of make some money, but also have um, good content you know this might be a this might be an audience that we didn't think of initially friends and family members for new motorcycle riders who may want to purchase safety gear as gifts right we were just thinking oh so someone wants to learn about new motorcycle riding uh motorcycle riding schools or instructors can share the blog with their students so the better you make this content and if instructors or riding schools see this they may see that as a, a value and may actually recommend it during their courses that could be a potential win there too so that's something to keep in mind. In this case, it's more of a pro, a pro kind of um, viewpoint, like instructors or riding schools, right? They're pretty much professionals in terms of how to ride a motorcycle, but they can see the value in the the topic we're writing about for new motorcycle riders learning how to ride safely. Motorcycle enthusiasts, uh, young adults, who may be more inclined. And what I would do is run this maybe a few times. Whoops, run this a few times. So uh, we have our first output here. Right, so we just put output uh, one. And I like to do this just because I'm not gonna go with the first one it gives me. We wanna have some sort of kind of uh, options to choose from. So I'll go ahead and highlight that again and submit the magic command, control one. And it's gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna see what we get uh, for this target audience. I think the first output was great and they broke it down line by line in just kind of a, a numbered list, right? So that made sense. And let's see for this one. So a good target audience, this is our, Output two, a good target audience for this blog would be individuals aged 18 to 35 who are interested in learning how to ride a motorcycle, have recently attained their motorcycle license, or are in early stage of their motorcycle riding journey. This audience may include those who are looking for guidance on uh, safety gear, 
as well as friends and families who rise to support their love of new hobby. Additionally, the target audience could consist of people who value safety once number. Okay, so this is more general, I would say, but it does touch on a lot of what's covered in the first output. I like the first output because it's specific to um, specific personas, enthusiasts, riding schools, instructors, friends and families, uh, individuals considering learning to ride. So I actually like the first output better. And so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep this. And now what I want to do is um, we have our target audience. So when within Zimwriter, let's bring this up. When we are creating a SEO blog, so I'll just show this an SEO blog writer, we have the ability to select an audience personality. And we'll come back to this when we're actually going through this as part of the steps to creating an SEO optimized blog. And you see, we have a bunch of these different uh, personality types, and these are based off of brand archetypes in marketing. So if we come back to this page here, if you just search up brand archetypes, the definitive guide, um, you're going to get some examples here. And these are just all the different archetypes that, uh, you know, content marketing would associate uh, with when it comes to an audience in terms of exploring spirituality, understanding freedom, right? So this kind of gives us an idea of what the audience would look like. And that's where it's pulling or what it's utilizing when you see something like outlaw magician. If you come here, outlaw magician, someone of liberation or power wanting to leave a legacy, right? So you get the tonality and the personality of the type of audience. So what I'm going to do now so we can understand, all right, what, what is this? Because I've seen a lot of people in the Zimrider community not sure what to choose when it comes to the audience personality. So I think this is a pretty simple command that could help us do this. So I got a background information on what a good target audience would be. Now, how does this, what, which specific brand archetype does this get grouped into? So we'll say this here, one, two, three, uh, brand archetype, right? This is just within the audience. So what I would do, and I did this before, just to test, I copy this and I'm going to paste it below that list, right? Which brand archetype would you associate this audience with? GPT-4 will know this. Brand archetypes is not a new concept, right? It's been around for a while. So this is in their knowledge database, if you will. And they will be should be able to associate this um, this information with the specific brand archetype or whichever one it might best suit it for. So I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to hit Control One. We're going to let Zimrider do its thing. All right. So it says I would associate this audience with a caregiver brand archetype. This archetype focuses on providing guidance, support, and protection, which aligns well with the goals of the blog: promoting safety, sharing gear recommendations, and fostering a community of responsible motorcycle riders. Look at that. That's pretty good. Um, not only does it give you an audience recommended caregiver or um, brand archetype as a recommendation, it tells you why it gives it, right? So this archetype focuses on, it says why, why it chose this because caregiver, it focuses on providing guidance, support, and protection. And then it says, all right, you know why? Because this aligns with what the, blog, the, the goals of the blog are. Safety, sharing gear recommendations, fostering a community of responsible motorcycle riders. So it understands what's going on here, which is awesome. So we have caregiver. Right, we can use that. So our caregiver is our brand archetype here, right? We can say it's a caregiver. So when we're coming down to creating um, a blog, we actually know we can select caregiver to give it the best, you know, audience personality. We can actually give it when it comes to feeding the AI or trying to prompt the AI to give us the best output possible when it comes to audience personality. And we'll play around with this. So we can also do, um, I believe, when I last tested it. Let's see. Oh, I kind of closed it out. We'll come back to it. So that's that's exactly how to get your brand archetype. So now uh, we have our audience and we have its its caregiver, right? So I'm going to take this. I'm going to just move this up here. Our brand archetype, great audience caregiver. I don't need this. So I don't need this anymore. What I do like is uh, this little snippet here because it's always going to remind us and kind of ties back to the goals of the blog. I'm going to paste that here. And you can format format this however you like. I just like to kind of keep notes of what's going on here. Um, so we have our topic. I don't know why this is a heading caregiver. Okay, and we can remove that. So caregiver, and we'll bold this all. There we go. So we got caregiver. Great. I would associate with the caregiver brand archetype. We can delete this because we already say that, uh, which aligns well with the goals of the blog, promoting with the goals of the blog. Right. So. This is something I also, whoops, um, would like to also build out or break out, if you will, um, blog goals, right? So it 
and it kind of put that in perspective for us. So now we have exactly what we want is the whole goal was promoting safety, sharing gear recommendations, fostering community of responsible motorcycle riders. So we have um, a pretty good aspect before we start even creating the category structure, which we can kind of work on next. So I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to, uh, I like these points just because, so I'm just going to keep that in the audience section because it kind of breaks it out. We can remove all our commands here. And then we're going to talk about category structure. So creating and developing a category structure for the blog. We have some pretty key info in terms of the topic, the theme, the audience, the specific archetype, right? To help us tailor this blog um, or the content in this blog more towards uh, the caregiver persona. We have our blog goals. So now let's start developing a category structure and how we're going to actually categorize and properly outline this blog. So there's a few different commands I like to use. And one, we're going to first use our background information here. So why are we creating a blog? And then I'm going to add to this, whoops, I'm going to take our blog goals and I'm going to say the goals of this blog are to our promoting safety, right? So I'm just going to say that so we can say what, we, what the goals are specifically. And we're going to use this and we're going to write our command right below that. And this is how I like to structure or generate the blog topics using AI. So we're going to say uh, we, oh, we already have that. Sorry. We already have our our information here. So now I want to say, uh, please write, or you just say write, you don't have to be polite, write four different uh, categories, each category containing two words or less for my blog. And then I'm going to highlight this. So write four different categories, each category containing two words or less for my blog. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to control one. And this should then give us four main categories how we're, on how we're going to tailor our blog. So writing techniques, gear essentials, safety tips, writer community. Okay, good start. Let's highlight this again and get a second output to see what we get here. Gear essentials, writing techniques, bike maintenance, writer stories. I'll go ahead and generate one more time. I like to do multiple generations. Whoops. I like to do multiple generations because you get different outputs sometimes and you can pick which one you'd like the best. So we got gear essentials a lot and writing techniques and safety safety tips, right? So those are those are staying, it looks like. Community corner, I don't like the way that sounds. Writer stories, um, writer community, safety tips. We might have three. Let's see, I want one more. Let's do it again. Let's see what we get for our fourth time. I mean, we could definitely do writer community, safety tips, gear reviews. So this is actually, it's these four. Uh, safety tips. Oh, no, it's these four. Okay, so writer essentials, write gear reviews, writing techniques. No, I don't. I mean, write essentials we have, writing techniques, safety tips. I do like gear reviews. So we could do something like that. We can play around with that. Um, and we could always make a fourth category. So we'll st we'll stick we'll stick with that for now. So now we have our uh, main categories. Right, these are our main categories. Great. So now we want to actually generate uh, subcategories within each of these main categories. So how do we do that? So with this being our main, now our prompt here is going to be generate subcategories for each of the four categories above. Each category should be no more than two words. Generate three subcategories for each category. So I want three for each and display each category on its own line. So generate our prompt is going to be for subcategories, generate subcategories for each of the four categories above. Each category should be no more than two words. Generate three subcategories for each category and display each category on its own line. So now I'm gonna take this command and highlight the main categories. I'm gonna hit control one. And now this is going to feed the AI and give us back our output. So we should have 12 or so subcategories that we're gonna have um, sections here. So here we go. So now we have gear essentials. So helmets, protective clothing, bike accessories. Great. Writing techniques, cornering, braking, cornering skills, braking techniques, body positioning. Awesome. Safety tips, traffic navigation, weather adjustments, group riding. Perfect. Gear reviews, product comparisons, best brands, budget picks. I actually like all this. Uh, what I would normally do is run this again. Like I said, run it multiple times and pick and choose what you would use for the specific main categories. But this is a great start. A great initial first output from GPT-4. Pretty impressed. All right, so now we have uh, that output. 
So what do we want to do now? We want to, we want to actually generate uh, topics, right? So we have, and we can come back and delete this now. So we have our category structure, main categories, and our subcategories. So I don't need to have this. We have it all here, right? We have our category structure here. Um, let's let's do a blog. Just kind of structuring this document blog outline. Okay, so category structure, uh, gear essentials. We'll start there. So now what we want to do is generate some topics around here. We want to uh, so uh, content. I'll do content topics, right? And we want to utilize our outline as things we want to write about, right? Topics we want to write about for each content. So what we can do and in chat GPT or GPT four open AI, right? They know about motorcycle writing, right? They're pretty well informed on this. Not much has changed over the years besides just the technology in bikes or motorcycles. The rules and regulations have adjusted slightly, not that much. It's all pretty um, legacy information, if you will, but it's all about how we package it. Um, some new, new things we may want to point out when it comes to gear and different techniques that have been learned over time, but you can understand that you know the, the AI knows about this topic, so we should be pretty pretty okay with writing. So for content topics, the prompt we're going to want to use is first we're going to take each category here like this. We're going to paste it. Then we're going to bring down our prompt and we're going to say for blog for a blog about, or we can come back here and say uh, for a blog about helping new motorcycle riders on the right motorcycle, and educate them on proper riding gear. We can tailor the topic here. So let's say for the blog about helping new motorcycle riders learn how to ride safe, how to safely ride motorcycles and educate them on proper gear for to wear for all riding conditions. In this blog, we will uh, promote safety, safety sharing. Okay, so now that's just the background text we want to have for the category about uh, gear essentials. Create a list of four blog post topics to write about for each of the subcategories listed above. List each blog post topic on a separate line. We're going to be using a few different inputs here. So we're going to keep changing when it comes to the category, right? Gear essentials. We're going to it was looking at this, but we're going to change this every time. So what I mean is that now I have my prompt and some background info. I'm going to highlight the whole prompt here with the gear essentials, um, main category and the subcategories. I'm going to hit control one. This is going to give us our first list of content. Okay. So this is the first output we have. <clears throat> you can see we have helmets, right? It, it goes into the specific subcategory. The ultimate guide to choosing the right motorcycle helmets for beginners. Top five helmet brands for new motorcycle rider safety and style combined. Understanding helmet safety ratings, what every rider needs to know. The pros and cons of different helmet types, full face, modular, and open face. These are some good ones. And we can choose if we want four of these or not, three, however we see fit. Um, but the idea here is now we have some topics. Protective clothing, the importance of wearing proper motorcycle riding gear for safety and comfort. Right, We're talking about riding comfortably and uh, safety. So those are two big things there in terms of aligning with our goal and our overall theme of the blog. Uh, the best materials for protective motorcycle clothing, leather versus textile. This is also always a conversation that comes up the community in versus leather versus textile, vinyl or windbreaker jackets type material. Um, I forget what the material is actually called, but this is this is an actual legitimate conversation that comes up. The guide to choosing the right com motorcycle gloves and boots for new riders. New riders, yes. Um, What's going on next here? The top 10 most protected gear for every month. Those are, that's great. A top 10, <clears throat> the best materials, bike accessories, essential motorcycle accessories for new riders from bike covers to tire gauges. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Top five motorcycle security advice. Keep your bike safe and secure. Also a good one. Some people are, when they think about motorcycles, they think, you know, it's easily get stolen. How do we, how do we prevent that? This is an article about this. A beginner's guide to motorcycle luggage options, saddlebags, tank bags, tail bags. This is great because um, for accessories or bikes, usually people don't, they think there's only, you know, bagger style bikes is the only ones that can have bags or saddlebags attached. But there's other options like tank bags, uh, tail bags um, that can also give you some extra storage options for your bike, even if, even if it's a smaller bike. The benefits of installing a motorcycle communication for safe group riding. That's awesome. 
I actually like a lot of these. So just for sake of the demo, say we were good with this and we wanted to move on to the next uh, topic. What you can do is continue to run this, run this multiple times, right? And, and pick and choose the topics you do or do not want. So I'm gonna classify this here. Uh, we have gear essentials. We have gear essentials here. So this is a good one. And we'll move down to the next. So what we do now is we can remove gear essentials. We'll come down into the next one about writing techniques. We'll copy this, paste it down here. We're gonna take uh, writing techniques here, copy. And we're gonna place it in where we had gear essentials, paste. I don't need bold. And then we're just gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna highlight control one. This is gonna allow you to build out the topics massively in terms of saving time, but also with ha them having great context. And it gives us starting points, right? A lot of this is to give us a starting point for ideation. And then once we're going into optimization and, and content creation, then we can decide if this is a good one, a good fit based on competitive research and doing, you know, other learn or learn, having more or learning or understanding more about the specific topic, you know, search volume of uh, the intent of a specific piece, looking at the search engine results page and doing some competitive analysis there. But for now, we're going to build out our base. So here we go. We have cornering skills, right? Mastering the art of slow speed cornering on a motorcycle. This is actually very one of the most difficult things for new riders to get a hold of. How to navigate sharp turns and hairpin with confidence. This is also kind of ties into there, but the riding at slow speeds, especially cornering and turning, uh, is something you know that does it that takes a lot of skill, especially if you're just starting out. Understanding counter steering, this is a big one. Tips for cornering, these are great. These are great so far. So you can see that we have. Let me see. Did I have this? Yes. I'm gonna just keep these for the sake of just building out and staying in line with what we're doing. You can see that this is riding techniques, right? So we now have our second one here. I'll just keep that closed and we can close out writing techniques. Now we're getting safety tips, right? These aren't bad, whoops, by any stretch of the imagination in terms of the, the topics that they're putting out. And I say they, I mean that chat that GPT-4 is putting out. So now I'm going to do the same thing for safety tips. Control one. And this is costing, costing me cents, right? Cents to output. And I want you guys to see the full fledged, you know, workflow of how I'm doing this. And now that's, that's why it's going to be a long video because I want you to see exactly how my method of thinking is the prompting, uh, and not trying to think of too much at once in the beginning, we want to just get started and get some of this structured out for us. We could always remove things later or even add more, but it's really going to be how you use Zimwriter, how you, um, leverage the different prompts and the instructions you're feeding into the AI. So now for safety tips, we have our. Uh, tips here, mastering, navigating, sharing, importance of proper signaling, safely riding alongside, intersection safety. This is great. Riding in the rain, riding in the heat, winter warriors, adapting riding style for specific weather conditions, kind of rolling it all up. Group riding. I like it. So let's do it again. Uh, safety tips. And I believe our last one here is going to be gear reviews. So we'll copy that, paste, and we'll just take gear reviews. And we will copy, oh, control one, <coughs> excuse me. All right, here we go. So now we have product comparisons, full face versus modular, leather versus textile. And we had an article around there. So we can also link back to it where we talk about the specifics, but now this is gonna be more of a comparison of the product itself. Motorcycle gloves, this is great. Top five motorcycle boots, best brands. Or I, would, I could say we can even do popular brands. I wouldn't say best, we can do popular brands. Everyone, because you know, some everyone's gonna have brand loyalty. Um, there are ones that are more popular than others. There are ones that are better in terms of their manufacturing process, if you will. Uh, but we won't be a, take a biased approach here. Uh, budget picks. This is great. Everyone's gonna want to know budget uh, picks because motorcycle gear is not really that cheap. Um, and if it's cheap, it's usually not that well made. Let's just uh, keep it real. So I'm gonna close out gear reviews here, and three gear reviews. Cool. So we have our four sections, content topics. Oh, did it put out another? It did. It duped it for some reason. And this is something. So what's cool about this now is like for Zim Rider, let me back out. We can come into uh, advanced triggers and actually can save this magic command. So if I want to save this for another time, I can copy it and I can come into the magic commands here. And I have one already for blog categories, blog subcategories. 
right? So if I click it, you could see I have it. I have prompts I, I saved and you can set it to a specific command. But what I want to also um, look at here is creating an empty one. So I want to call this um, uh, topic, topic gen, right? So it's topic gen assigned to trigger. I'm not going to assign the trigger, but I just want to save my, my output. So then I know for in and out input here, I just keep note that I can uh, uh, main category. So that way I know when I'm writing a blog, I can just put the main category and I have the prompt saved. You can obviously save this in a Word document or, or an Excel file or something like that. But, you know, we can actually save this and then and save it to a magic command just to keep our workflow going. Cool. So I have that saved and I'm going to close this. You could also, um, before I close that out, in advance triggers for Zimwriter, all the background information we had here or we've been we were using, we actually can put it in its own separate place. <clears throat> in Zimwriter. So that way we don't have to keep typing it or copying and pasting it like I'm showing you. I'm showing you that way just so you can see the manual process, right? But Zimwriter has now built in feature where you can input the background information here. And it'll always, every time you enable a magic command, it'll keep that background information in, in mind when generating the output. Another way to streamline your process, you can, again, save a few different uh, sections or, or background information types, whether it's multiple blogs or just specific uh, background information that's tailored to a specific thing you're working on, right? And then there's some other options here, like literary, enabling literary devices, lists, and things like that when you're generating content output for your magic commands. But we won't dive into much of that. I like these two features now uh, for that reason. So now we have our, um, our article topics, right? We have things we can write about a ton, a ton. So we, we have content we can start working on now. And if we put this to the side, <coughs> We have a ton of things we can start writing for. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out some of this. We're going to talk about writing techniques first, and you can use phrase for this as well. You can use um, pretty much anything. Honestly, you can use other uh, what I like to we can use this other tool I like to use and maybe more um, cost effective. If we log in here, let me just log in. Cool. Not now. So I don't want to say that now. So what we can do here is we can actually um, do a SERP scrape or SERP analysis, if you will, S similar to what you can do in phrase, you can purchase credits. It might be cheaper, you know, $7 per month, $9 per month. You can do things like that. Um, just to get access to it. What we also want to be able to look at is, uh, let me go back here. You can go to the scraper, right? You can put in a SERP you want to analyze in the keyword, or for those of you, I would recommend something like phrase too. phrase is pretty great. Um, at doing this, I like their workflow. So I'll sign into phrase now. The benefits of wearing a motorcycle helmet. See, I did one before. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'll go into Moto Gear Nation. I'll start a new document and we can, let's see, um, create new content, target search query, long tail works best. So what we can look at, we have uh, writing techniques, cornering skills, uh, mastering art of slow speed. So we can do that, you know, writing techniques, enter search query you want to rank for. So we can do writing techniques, uh, cornering skills. Literally, I'll type in the main category and the subcategory. Uh, this is fine. So I'll create a new document. And what it's going to do is going to bring us into a brief and it's going to say, well, it's going to process the top 20 Google search results for the query writing techniques, cornering skills. Sure, let's go. So while that's loading up, what you can do while you have things working in the background, I can actually bring up my uh, WordPress instance for the website I'm testing with this blog called Moto Gear Nation. WordPress 6.2 is now available. So we can do uh, post categories. I think I have pre-built categories out, but I'm gonna delete them, apply. And I had some old posts I'm going to delete. Haven't published anything, but I want you guys to see this process from scratch. So while things are working in the background, you wanna, you're gonna want to add in your category. So we go to post categories specifically for WordPress. We could do uh, gear essentials, add new category. We'll do uh, writing techniques add category, safety tips, and gear reviews, add new category. Now we're gonna add my subcategories. So I have writing techniques open, so I'll just start with those. Um, cornering skills, and the parent category for cornering skills is writing techniques, and, and I'm just gonna come copy and paste this. Breaking techniques, it's under writing techniques. Body positioning, I'm gonna copy this, paste it, add category. Now we'll go ahead and do uh, gear essentials as a parent category, and what do we have here? For gear essentials so we have helmets under gear essentials protective clothing bike accessories add new category and we'll do safety tips safety tips traffic navigation is one weather 
adjustments, group writing. And last but not least, we have our gear reviews here. There we go. So we have product comparisons, uh, popular brands, budget picks. There we go. So we have our fully fledged out categories and our subcategories, and we have that built out. So we come back to phrase now. You see over here, it actually analyzed the top 20 search queries or search results using the query writing techniques and cornering skills. Now, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to actually export. So what I, the whole reason I'm using phrase is to export the SERP data here. And you can use other tools for this, I guess, if you if it's going to excerpt the SERP data. But what I really want to grasp is H1s, uh, target keywords. You can use, SEM, um, what's it called? Uh, Surfer SEO if you want to for something like this. I think even SEMrush does this as well. But once we have that, I'm going to come into export, export Excel SERP data. So I want to export the SERP data. I'm going to save writing techniques. I'm going to open this Excel document, enable editing. All right. So I have my content here of what I scraped, my URLs, titles. I have the headers, topics, which is great. So now I'm going to come back into ZimWriter and we're going to start. You can do the bulk blog writer for something like this. I would recommend, you know, starting or even looking just as the SEO blog, because it's just going to be more tailored to what we're looking for. So I'm going to start with the SEO blog writer. It's more powerful. It allows you to have more settings. The bulk blog writer, you know, it's going to generate a lot of content for you. Pretty good content, but start with the SEO blog writer so you can understand just the aspect of what we're trying to do here. So what I'm going to start with first, um, it wasn't in safety tips. It was definitely in writing techniques, mastering the art of slow speed cornering. And that's our H1. And let me get rid of the number. How many subheadings do we want to set for this? So I'm going to say, I mean, it depends on maybe what's going on here. I mean, it says that there's about, you know, the average is four across the search results. So I'm going to look at, we have five. I'm going to set it to six. Six is a good one. Uh, set this H2 subheading data. So we can copy from a clipboard. We can generate the H2s using AI, or we can generate the H2s using AI plus comp uh, competition h2 and h3 so input h2 and h3 titles uh from the competition which is what we're doing now so what i can do is i can take uh that serp excel sheet we were looking at before i could go to headers and i'm going to add a filter here just so i can sort through this data a little bit easier a filter and the header tag i'm not looking at h6s or h4s h1 twos or threes <clears throat> great and then we can look down and we want to look at the headers that we have for these and we want to choose the ones that we know that make sense and that we want to utilize to feed the AI to, to make our own or create our own off of. So keep that in mind. So four ways to improve cornering skills, uh, training. This is a more of a branded one here, right? So that's a good one. And I would just start deleting ones that we don't maybe want. So being predictable, uh, four keys to cornering, right? Lowering your center of gravity, uh, steering It's kind of generic, uh, staying at the front, right? I'm just going to remove the number. Cornering motorcycle confidence, no. Uh, motorbike cornering tips, your yeah, body position, counter steering, throttle control and gears, picking a line, cornering on a track, welcome. We don't need this, we don't need this. Advanced rider course, how to corner your motorcycle pricing. Um, <clears throat> no, that's based on an interview. What are your eyes, joints, bike, brain doing, how to corner a road bike, body position. Uh, we already have that. Line choice, braking speed, braking and speed, cornering on gravel, that's a good one. So I'm gonna remove this. Uh, cornering on gravel, cleats and shoes, malware bites is updating in the background, bike handling skills for gravel, hopping obstacles on a bike, the best gearing for gravel riding. Hmm. I'm not sure if this is motorcycles. It might be like actual bikes. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. So I want to copy this because it might not be tailored to what we're looking at, but it also might be. Yeah. This is like actual bicycling, bicycling. So I'm not going to look at this in terms of uh, bike radar stuff. And look, bicycling, I love bicycling, right? We don't want that. Mountain bikes. No, I know Aria Adventure Radio. Big Apple Motorcycle School might be a good one there. Uh, Team Arizona riding. This doesn't make sense. Okay. So what we can also do is fine tune this. So maybe it'll make sense if we... So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna update the document to motorcycle riding to be a little bit more specific. I'll turn off this Jasper. I don't really use Jasper anymore. All right. So I wanted to research those 20. And I'm going to keep all this in the video in the video just so you can see the process and how if something does come up where maybe your topics or headings aren't that tailored to what you're trying to write about, how you can go about fixing it. It might just be, you know, adjusting or improving the search that you 
initially did within within phrase or with other with which tool you're using to generate or extract those uh those eight those header tags all right so then i can do another excel serp export i'll save it i'll open it enable editing so now if we come down here looks more motorcycle related i'm gonna filter this again we'll take uh there we go one two h one two and three so this this looks a little bit more what we're looking for uh post navigation improving your motorcycle writing skills we don't need this advanced writer course vermont nope newsletter welcome to the confidence program register detail uh look ahead advanced writing techniques build your motorcycle cornering skills change gears properly the complete picture breaking in the corner in corner throttle speed in corner speed entering the corner lean in prepare breaking in gear changes tightening corners that's just a question cornering a track picking a line this is good okay uh, improving your motorcycle skill, street rider. These are just courses, course registration, classes. Yeah, this is all just for classes. Get rid of this one. So you want to pick the ones that we feel would make most sense. I mean, we can go ahead and copy these. Copy. And we'll come back to our SEO blog writer. And then we can input our H3s or 2s in there. Enable H2 background. I'm going to disable that for now. Keep it simple. So now we have uh, the header tags we want to utilize to actually generate our H2s and H3s. So what we're going to hit is, is um, generate H2 using AI and the comp competition. So what we have here is cornering basics, body positioning, counter steering, throttle control and gears, advanced riding techniques, tips for cornering on a motorcycle. Uh, probably add an H3 here. Let's see. We want to maybe um, add an H3 there. Tips for cornering on a motorcycle, medium voice we want to keep it uh personal so it could be a lot of use instead of eyes uh, we're going to enable literary devices enable lists and you could see if you hover over you can see this uses over 500 literary devices such as metaphors similes etc enable lists <clears throat> it's going to give a 40 percent chance to add a markdown bullet and numeric lists in an h2 you can enable tables enable faq enable the t's all right t's is a, a transition paragraph for the end of h2 sections all, uh, boost chance of detection as real <clears throat> So increase the chance of album being detected as written by a human. You can do that. I usually don't enable that. And then we have our audience personality, which was caregiver. I'm going to click that. You can use writing the style of, and then an example like Al Capone or Ryan Reynolds, Steve Jobs, someone you want to write in the style of. I'm going to keep this blank for now. And then we're going to, we're not using any translation, optionally set keywords, keywords per section. Uh, I'm going to say five. Uh, what we're going to do is choice two manual keywords. So then when we come back into our um, Excel sheet that we had before, we come into the topics tab now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in the keywords that we see here. And what I like to do is um, not just the single keywords. I like to look at any multi-word keywords. So anything single, I just will remove because we're going after long tail. So confidence. Um, and there's more context to the long tail keywords as well. So I'm going to come down here. Um, I'm going to remove any single word keywords. It's like so see anyone else here i don't see any others all right and then also i'll highlight this i'll come into data or review or is it maybe i have to elongate this uh data there we go remove duplicates any duplicates i'll remove then i'm going to copy the column or just copy oh motorcycle list i don't want that um or you can keep it if you want you can keep in the single word keywords i just like to keep the long tail in here Go ahead and paste those into the choice two manual keyword section. You could also automate the keyword generation, have AI create SEO keywords and use them while it writes. I like to feed it what I want it to address for the specific SERP. And then the model, I'm gonna use GPT-4 in this case, since I have access to that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I can start the SEO writer, create all the settings, but you want to also maybe review anything you have here. So cornering basics, let's see, uh, have any AI added H3 to this, maybe. I'm curious to see H3s is new for Zimwriter. So I'm going to just say add a H3 for not all of them. Let's just do uh, tips, body positioning, remove that. Now we'll just do the, the last four, I guess, or the last three. Half of them will with and half of them without. And now we're going to hit uh, start SEO writer. So it says I'm okay to write. I'm, gonna, I'm ready to write your article. I'm going to write your background, write in the background. Writing one article takes about three to seven minutes. Keep your computer online and not locked. I'm going to hit okay. You see the right bottom right hand corner, it's starting to generate my blog posts. It should be 
be done shortly. It'll let me know. So while this is happening, this is only writing one article for us. Uh, I'm going to close just this information here. Uh, I'm going to paste it into phrase here so you guys can see how it measures up. But ultimately, we can also then start creating our uh, posts behind it, right? I'm going to create another video, video on how to automate some of this using Make, Airtable, and OpenAI into WordPress. But what we can do is start adding a new post. You know, we'll get, kind of get this ready. I'm going to copy the title. Um, I don't know why I have all this stuff. Uh, close. I think it's some plugins I have. Um, all right, so I'm going to close that just to keep it lowered down. And I'm going to come to Category. So we know this one is uh, Writing Techniques. Uh, cornering skills. So there we go. We can add our tags if we'd like a featured image. Of course, uh, we can actually get AI to write us like the meta descriptions if we would like, <coughs> excuse me. But I think actually with the new Zim writer feature, this SEO writer, I think it actually might create an SEO summary for us or a meta description if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken from the new update. So we're at 14% now you can see it's at 14% complete with that blog post. So what you can do, and I think it also, it also might generate an image for us or a prompt we can use for um, image generation <clears throat> based on the content. So we'll see. You have about 14% in counting. So we'll let that run. And you can start you know, queuing up some of these other things or uh, building out your blog in terms of just all the other settings too. So we have, I'm going to save this as a draft. <clears throat> we can come back into our posts. Let me just make this window a little bigger. Our post here, we have our categories here. You can see you can start doing things like setting up your theme or specifically uh, your permalinks, right? So I have it. My custom structure is category, then post name. Makes the most sense to me. That's what I have now. Uh, yeah, so we can come back into our posts here. 21% done with the article so far. So about three to seven minutes it takes. I want you to get an idea. So using the... And let me, let me come back to... Um, this generates as an output file. Let me come back to, yeah, so Zim Writer. So what you can do here too, there, like I said, they have a bulk writer as well, or a one-click blog writer. I'm using the SEO one just because you get a lot more inputs. For example, the bulk, actually, I actually don't know if we'll be able to open it while it's running a, a command, probably not, but it allows you to do multiple articles at once. And although it's going to be a lot and save you time, a lot of it's going to be generated with the AI and you're not going to have as many inputs. And I could showcase that a little bit later or in another video. We're now at a uh, 28% complete. I'll probably speed this up to when the article's uh, completely finished. Now let's actually just take a look to, um, let's see. So motorcycle news is ranking number one for this. The average word count, you know, if you want to take the metrics or look at the metrics at a very high level for what phrase is producing based on averages from this SERP scrape, not a lot of links, not a lot of images, right? So we might want to generate some more images for our posts. That's something we're going to also continue to optimize when we're creating these posts, right? Headings, questions. Are we, we have an FAQ section, so it's going to generate some questions for us. Um, optimize. We'll, we'll see what it scores here. I, I, don't, I don't really focus on these SEO scores much. You know, they don't really, they're just kind of guidance more than anything. They're not a source of truth. Uh, but what you can also do you can see when you search in this search, cornering a motorbike with confidence. It's an article, of course. Um, tips for cornering. All these are articles, right? So we're in, the, we're in the right kind of zone in terms of the type of post or piece of content we're creating, right? It matches the intent of this specific search. And you can see I'm not even focusing on search volume right now. I'm not looking and focusing on keyword research around search volume. I'm trying to get a basis of the blog, what the goal is, and and develop content around that that's going to actually help the user. So we're going to shape, possibly shape the output we get here, uh, more so, you know, in terms of grammar correction, adding more images or visualizations to the post. We're not just going to copy the output, paste it, and publish. So I'm going to show you a few different things you want to take into consideration when doing that. Then it's going to be a kind of a rinse and repeat as you go through each post. Like I said, you can do the bulk writer, but I wouldn't recommend just bulk generating a bulk blog, a bulk amount of blogs, and then posting them all. Uh, you might see some small gains in the beginning, but in the long term, I'm not too sure how well that's going to do for you. So we're around 42% complete, and you can see what we have here. Okay, so you now you get this prompt that jumps up and tells you that uh, a little bit about what's going on. So it's here, it says that, you know, token spent estimate 19,800 tokens spent, which about almost 3,000 words. So we have a 3,000 word article. Uh, this is about 49 cents 
That's what it lets us know. The open AI stat status. So 98% healthy out of the 57 calls. Hey, we saw one fail. We attempt to several retrievers. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Not charge tokens when a call fails. I wonder which one that, that was. Settings used. It gives us the settings, uh, which is cool. Uh, now Zimrider gives us a mid journey AI prompt to utilize. So I do have a mid journey account. So I'm going to check that out and see what that looks like. Uh, meta description, unlock the secrets. And I believe all this is included in the file. So uh, meta description, unlock the secrets to slow speed cornering, right? It gives us a meta description and then, and then our actual article, which is cool. So it tells us where it's located. I have it here, opened up, saved into my um, Obsidian file. So it, it saves into the folder for Obsidian for me. So it's easy to use. So I can see that information here. So this is the actual um, output. So I'm going to delete this. 49 cents to create a 3000 word article, which is great. I'm actually going to test out the mid journey, uh, feature here. So let's go ahead and open up discord. I'm going to put the prompt in. So let's see, imagine and then prompt. So let that generate and see what that looks like. And then I can give you guys a, a preview, uh, meta description, unlock the secrets to slow speed cornering on a motorcycle and boost your ride with confidence. Don't miss out. So we can add that in if we wanted to, when it looks, uh, let's go to our blog. We can go to edit now. All right, SEO meta description. Let's say we wanted to put that in. It creates it for you. Uh, mastering the art. So I'm going to copy all this cornering basics, body, counter steering, gear shifting, body position, throttle. So I see our H3s in here, which is cool. Um, frequently asked questions. So we're hitting now. Let's copy this into phrase. So we already have our H1. Uh, all right. So I forgot phrase doesn't read markdown. Um, I forgot what it's called. The linger. No, it's a uh, markdown converger converter, uh, oh, Dillinger. I always forget what it's called. So I go to Dillinger. I'm going to copy this, paste my markdown into here. And I'm just going to copy the output here. Then I'm gonna come back to phrase, delete that and paste it in. So now I have my H threes. You can see that it gave us a 77%, which is not bad, right? Considering what we have here. Um, but yeah, we would go through this, go ahead and correct the grammar. So you want to go ahead and do that throttle controls. So throttle control, gear selection, gear shifting, definitely adding images would be essential body positioning. We want to make sure this is right. Even a, an image on, you know, adding image for image, uh, image example on body positioning, right? Body positioning would be ideal or even linking to a, a video, right? If you have a video link to video, uh, would definitely be beneficial to the user. That way they can get all the information all at once, see what body positioning looks like. We have the, the text version. We have a, a link to a video of image of an example or of, of showing you how the body position should work. Throttle control, same thing. We want to kind of add that supplementary context or information content to, to this. Uh, so this is actually pretty cool. Let's see if I can bring this up. So um, this is what mid journey put together as the prompt, not bad. This guy's writing backwards, which is pretty funny. Uh, but cornering, I actually, you know, not bad. We can make some variations on there and, and see what, what it comes to be, but this is pretty cool. If you have a mid journey subscription, you can, uh, you can do something similar to that and we'll have our featured image, which would be great. So let's say just for the sake of the video, we looked at this all. I would highly, highly recommend you to go through this and make sure, you know, using Grammarly and make sure the grammar is proper conclusion. Um, I will give a tip here. I like to uh, change my conclusion. So I would say uh, uh, generate and the power of Zimrite, I can do this right within phrase, generate um, uh, five creative conclusion, conclusion headings for a blog about, and then I'll just take the title. Uh, I'll take this and then I'll hit control one. Oh, what happened here? First phrase control one. Oh, control one is another shortcut. So we'll take this here. It's another shortcut within, within, uh, Chrome. It looks like, oh no, where's our, is Zim is not running. Hold on. Let's run it. That seems to be the problem. So let's close that. Let's try that again. There we go. So I did another variation on the mid journey image. It looks like I got something I like. I'm going to save it. Let's see. I'll save it to downloads. Oh, I might have clicked out. I might have clicked away out of the text box before it actually had anywhere to paste the command in. There we go. So that's, that's our five. So instead of putting conclusion, I like to make it a little bit more creative. So uh, the Zen of slow transforming, navigating life, Swiss turns, lesson learned from slow sweet cornering. 
perfect slow speed cornering for a smoother motorcycle journey. I'll do this. Copy. Let's just say, so I like to just, that's my prompt for generating a, a more creative conclusion title besides conclusion. I mean, conclusion heading besides conclusion. Um, so let's do this. So yeah, embracing the curve, conquering slow speed cornering like a pro. In conclusion, and then yada, 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 right? So we have something a little bit more specific here. Cool. So then, you know, we can copy something like this and paste it into our actual WordPress, right? I'm going to go ahead and now go to our post. I'm going to go to featured image, select an image, and we have downloads, right? So we're going to take this pretty cool image it created. Um, let's see this. So motorcycle rider gracefully lean, gracefully leaning. And what I typically do is I'll just clear that out. Um, I'll just name it the title of the blog for now. Uh, set featured image. So now that's our featured image. And if we wanted a preview, let's go ahead and preview this. Uh, of course, this, so this is just my theme. And there you go. There you have a blog post, you know, 3000 words to WordPress using ZimWriter, uh, using the SEO writer feature. It also gives us our, our prompt here for, for a mid journey, which is pretty cool. I uh, really like that. And now you would just go ahead and do this for each article or you can also do a, a bulk upload as well. So hopefully you guys find this helpful. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns, anything you want to learn more about, you know, just let me know in the comments, check out my other videos revolving around optimizing existing content, uh, and check out my autom automation video on how to automate any content when uploading to Webflow. I will be having another one coming out soon about automation using Airtable, Make, and OpenAI to generate content and auto made the process of publishing to a WordPress blog like we did today. Uh, we took the more manual approach just to show you the ins and outs of the ZimWriter tool, but we all, I'll also be showing you an automated version of that. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.